Greetings everybody, thank you for checking out my channel. I'm Mike, and today we'll be putting together a mini ITX computer using the parts that you see here. Uh, the case that we've chosen for this is the Azza Stell, formerly known as the Raid Max Troy. We have the Z97N Game 5 computer from Gigabyte. We have a Pentium uh, Intel processor, which is socket LG1150. We have our modular power supply, 750 watts, made by Ultra, Special Edition X4. Corsair, 16 gigabytes of RAM, which is two sticks of eight gigabytes. And we have a solid state hard drive, um, 240 gigabytes case. Um, this is going to be a great case. I did a lot of shopping uh, at other mini ITX cases, and this one really caught my eye. Especially because of the size, the portability, um, the fact that you can lock it and carry it with you. It's going to be great for land parties. Um, so I shopped around for that for a while. There might be some complications with fitting everything in there, especially considering the size. But um, that's why we're making the video. We're going to give you some feedback and show you exactly what's going to go into this process. So um, the motherboard we have here is from the G1 Game 1. Um, we'll put in this chip. We're going to um, put in the memory, but then we're going to put the motherboard inside the case, hook it up with some power, and we'll see what happens. So. Alright, so we have our case here. I did some customizing of it. Uh, I was able to take out the entire cage and spray paint it this awesome gold color. Here is our cage. Already disassembled, hopefully. And uh, we can go ahead and say goodbye to this part in the meantime. I'm grounded before I start touching these electronics. Alright, so we got our Z97M. Gaming 5 Motherboard by Gigabyte. Let's go ahead and open up this bad boy and see what we got. Wow, that is extremely small. That's great. Alright. I'm not going to go over the features of this motherboard too much. Um, if you want to know more about it, just go ahead and look it up online. We have our processor right here. facing the right direction. Let me go ahead and slowly just drop it on in there. Looks like everything is good. Go ahead and close this. So it looks like the, the thermal paste is actually a pad that's already pre-applied here. And you can clearly see it. Alright, so to the ship itself. Press down. Turn right. So like so. Press down. Let's do. What we really want to do here is look at the bottom and make sure that the plugs there, I don't know if you can see it, the plugs for the heatsink are fully seated. So we are, everything's good. Let's go ahead and install ourselves some RAM here. Take a good look at that. So there is the motherboard with the chip and the RAM installed in. That's awesome. 
our back plate here. We're going to go ahead and install that. Put this thing in. There. motherboard is not going anywhere. And now, all right, so we're good there. Our next step is to install this bad boy. Already, I'm kind of seeing a problem. Looks like that the power supply modular cord might not have enough room there. There is a clearance issue. I tried to get the modular cable to fit just now, and there's absolutely no way that's going to fit. If you check out here, there is the 24 pin power connector for the motherboard that's not really conveniently placed and as you see the modular power supply has some protrusions on the side there. If you look at it from this angle, that last row is completely covered. Alright, so hey there to load it. I was able to go ahead and get this power supply to work. I unfortunately had to flip it so that the modular um, connectors are facing the opposite direction and although this is inverted it will work and I won't have to change power supply. So here we have the 24 pin power supply connected successfully. The wire is going to be run around the side here. Cable management can always be a challenge. Usually it just takes common sense to figure out what the best path is for your wires. Using these um, cable management Velcro strips it, it's a little bit easier, but uh, we're not going to go into too much on exactly how to run the wires. You kind of have to figure that out yourself. This uh, modular setup does make it just a bit easier to organize everything even though it does take up a little bit more space. We'll also need to connect our heat sink fan. This motherboard also has another fan controller. And here we have an 8 pin power connector. It's required for the motherboard power. Every other motherboard, there is a panel connector. You just need to check your motherboard manual and put the connectors to the correct pins on the header. Install our SATA connector for our drive and the USB 3.0 connector header has been plugged in. Back of the case here, we have this cool piece that was included with the uh, as a stealth case. It is a board that uh, manages the power for the two SATA drives that you'll have in there and it also has two uh, fan connectors. So I have one of the fans connected right now. And they're all powered by one 4-pin power supply, which is pretty convenient. Alright, so we have all the wires organized here. Everything is plugged in. We have the, uh, the cases, header pins connected to the motherboard. So it's time we're just going to go ahead and slide this cage right in the case here. So here we are. Alright, so as you can see, I was able to get the power supply to work. Uh, it's not exactly the most conventional way, but what I did 
is I actually flipped the module because the protrusion was blocking the 24 pin power supply um, connector on the motherboard. So by flipping it, I was able to get more clearance. Um, I am going to figure out a way to better mount this in here, but um, the setup will work for now. I was able to go ahead and um, manage those wires, and, uh, tuck on the wires, and try to get those in there the best I could. Use these nifty um, cable uh, management thing, Velcro strips, to tie all these cords together. It came with the power supply unit. So here we have it. Alright, so we've got our bios here. Let's select new device. Okay, so this screen in the bios is going to tell us uh, if it's reading all the hardware. It looks like all the memory is being read. It's identified our drives. So we have this uh, flash drive here with Windows 10 already installed on it. Go ahead and use it as the boot device. Alright, so everything is great. We have Windows up and running perfectly. Uh, I've updated all the drivers directly to the Gigabyte website and got all the up to date drivers. So everything is functioning um, great at this point. Just need to go ahead and put in the graphics card. I see. Clever. Very clever. And foolish. See, they all have you met So, well, good, good. Finally, a nemesis worthy of my vast interest.